What's up everybody, JJ here, and this is what an electrical fire looks like. I would not recommend anyone with a 12 volt 3D printer try to use the CHC hot end. That's what I was trying to review this week and I've spent all week working on it and I'm done doing their engineering for them. It doesn't work on a 12 volt system. This would be fine if they only sold it in a 24 volt configuration, but they ship it with a 12 to 24 volt converter and they don't supply any instructions for it. So the first way I wired it up was incorrect. I know that now because it caught on fire. I tried to wire it up in series. We'll go over the circuits. Luckily, I was still testing it outside of the machine, so I was very quickly able to turn it off. And luckily, I had put it inside of this 3D printed box, so it only burned inside of here. I do like Triangle Labs. I think it's a good company and they sell pretty good products at really good prices. But I wanted to get this CHC hot end to work. It's such a cool idea. It's basically the same heater technology that you find in the E3D Revo or the Fetus Rapido. It's a small, compact ceramic heater and thermistor all wrapped up in one small thing. So it's lighter weight, lower thermal mass, it's gonna heat up faster, cool down faster, and with a more integrated thermistor, hopefully you can get more accurate readings on the temperature of the nozzle. There's a bunch of benefits to this style of heater, so that's why I really wanted this to work. I spent all week trying all these different configurations. I ordered a pack of identical voltage boosters. All the components on this board are identical to the burned out ones inside here and it came in a large pack, so I tried several of them throughout the week. But even when it's wired up correctly and tuned correctly to the 24 volt output, when you start heating up the hot end, it drags that output voltage all the way down, almost all the way back to 12 volts. So I think these are just not the correct component to get it to work correctly. I do have a degree in electrical engineering, not saying I'm infallible when it comes to circuits, but I do know a thing about two about circuits and I've tried a lot of different things here. I tried a large fan blowing on it to keep all these components cool because initially they were getting pretty hot. I tried three different ones of these since they are fairly cheap little components that I thought maybe one of them was just bad. And then maybe the second one was bad or if I'd maybe burned it out by doing something incorrectly. After the third one, I was like, I've done enough work on this, I'm done. We're going back to the original V6 hot end, and this has to be a negative review. So I guess we can go into the circuitry, just because I think these are really cool boost converters, where if you did want to use these for powering a 24 volt fan, or something else that's over 12 volts on your system, I think these could work really well. But I just wouldn't use these for the hot end or the heated bed. Those require a lot of wattage, and I just don't think these are up to that task. I will go through my circuit diagram, so maybe if someone else knows something I'm doing incorrectly here, you can help me out. I would love to change this review later on if I did something incorrectly. So this top diagram will be the incorrect way to do it. That's how I did it initially and caused this to catch fire. So really be careful to not do that. So I wired it up like normal. Positive goes straight in there. Negative to negative. Powering the control board. And then from the control board I fed both of these wires directly into this. Same thing. Positive to positive. And negative to negative. I then put a voltmeter here to measure the output voltage because I was going to calibrate this to 24 volts. So I turned on the control board to tell it to power these wires and it caused this to start sparking and light on fire. Do not do that. This is incorrect. Internally the control board is switching the ground wire. Well I know it's switching the ground wire but I think it's doing it too quickly for this voltage DC to DC converter. So that's why down here, this new system we're going to use, power is still fed directly into there, but the ground wire will be fed into the control board, but we will also feed it directly into our voltage booster. And from here, the positive side will be fed into there. And here is our new CHC hot end and feed this ground wire from the control board directly over here. So since this ground wire is what's going to be switching on and off to really tell the heater whether to be heating or to cool down. So this 12 volt to 24 volt converter will always get power. It's never going to be switched on and off super quickly. So hopefully this shouldn't burn it out like that one did. And the reason we fed the power through the control board and then to the DC to DC converter is because there should be a fuse inside here that should give us a little bit more protection. But for our situation, this should explain what we're doing today. 
So if you see something wrong in how I wired it up, let me know in the comments down below or something you think I might be able to try to get it working on a 12 volt system. I think this might work fine on a 24 volt system, but they sell it in a 12 volt configuration and that's the main problem. I bought this to install on the Anycubic Mega S, which is a 12 volt system. And so that's how I'm testing it. That's how I'm reviewing it as a 12 volt system. This is a huge failure. Here are some screenshots of it when I did get it kind of working. But the problem is this voltage booster is only boosting it maybe to 13 volts, maybe a little bit over 13. So there's just not enough power going to this hot end to get it to heat up quick enough. It took about three minutes to get to 200 Celsius. And when I tried to boost it all the way to 280, which is what they recommend for a hot nozzle tightening, I got a thermal runaway error because it plateaued at about 250 and couldn't heat anymore. I do think it helped the system when I put the silicone sock on there. I was worried maybe the hot end cooling fan was cooling off this little thing since there isn't enough thermal mass maybe it just was too much cooling for it and even though the silicone sock helped it wasn't enough to make a big difference one other disadvantage of this lower thermal mass became apparent when i tried extruding filament at 200 celsius the plastic flowing through it was just zapping the heat out of it and when i tried to start a temperature tower test it ran through the skirt and then when it really started printing the base and really pushing a lot of plastic i got a thermal error and the the print was canceled. It all made a lot more sense once I realized this voltage booster was only giving about 13 volts to the hot end. And this component was rated at 4 amps of output. 4 amps at 24 volts should be about 100 watts. And on the listing for the CHC hot end, they say it only goes up to about 56 watts max, I think they say. So this in theory should be adequate, but in all of my testing this week, and I've tried, it just doesn't work do not use this for a 12 volt system. Maybe in the future, I'll revisit it for a 24 volt system, but as advertised, as purchased, stay away from this product. But anyway, I hope this review helps anyone who might be thinking about this for a 12 volt system just to steer clear. It is really dangerous and pretty reckless that they didn't put any instructions in there. That fire could have been really dangerous. And so if you stuck this far through the video, I hope you'll give this a like down below so more people will see this video. I think this is a dangerous situation and more people need to know about it. So hitting that like button should help more people see it. But anyway, that wraps up this review. Go out there, create something amazing today, not with a CHC nozzle. Use anything else and you should be fine. But anyway, I'll see you in the next video.